Have you ever wondered why 70% of Portugal seems like a ghost town? Well, today we're diving into the mystery behind this population puzzle. Portugal, nestled in Europe, is home to 10.3 million people. But here's the twist. Most of them crowd into just 30% of the country. The remaining 70% sits seemingly empty. But why? It's a story of old policies, rugged landscapes, and a country trying to balance its coastal charm with the quiet allure of its interior. So without further ado, let's dive into the reasons. The first reason would be rooted in historical and economic factors shaping Portugal's population distribution. Portugal's past unfolds like an old book, with Antonio de Oliveira Salazar taking the lead from 1932 to 1968. During his era, the coast received preferential treatment, leaving the interior somewhat isolated. Salazar favored seaside policies, and it led to tough times, with many seeking opportunities far away. The 1960s ushered in change, prompting many to set sail for countries like France and the US. However, even with the dawn of the Carnation Revolution, in 1974, the coastal regions continued to steal the limelight, leaving the interior in perpetual catch-up mode. The dwindling birth rates added to the challenge as the younger generation gravitated towards the allure of the coast, leaving the interior regions with a palpable sense of solitude. Now you might be wondering why people left the interior regions for the coast. The answer lies in Portugal's captivating topography, a tale of terrain that significantly influences where people choose to reside. Imagine rugged mountains like the towering Estrela, reaching 1993 meters. These aren't just picturesque peaks, they present challenges for construction and transportation. Envision navigating narrow, winding roads as your primary routes, while vast forests make plowing fields and establishing homes a tricky endeavor. It's almost as if nature itself is whispering. The coasts are more enjoyable. Central Portugal faces cold winters, and the serras like Salma Med and Caldero add mountain drama. Yet in the midst of this rugged adventure, some small towns and villages survive, offering a taste of authentic Portugal to explorers who dare to venture into the less traveled corners. The challenge? Building on roller coaster landscapes. Yet, while coastal vibes draw many, the interior beckons those seeking a different adventure. Fast forward a bit, and after the revolution, Portugal decided to change the game. Agriculture stepped back, and industry took the spotlight. It's like going from a countryside picnic to a bustling city scene. The plan worked, and the manufacturing sector boomed. But guess what? The interior regions didn't get the VIP passes to this party. They were left watching from the sidelines as cities stole the show. People left their cozy rural homes, chasing dreams in the glitzy cities or even overseas. These days, the economy has its eyes on services and technology. It's like upgrading from old-school farming to the high-tech world. Coastal regions are buzzing with activity, but the interior is still trying to find its rhythm in this new economic dance. So if you ever wondered why the coast is all shiny and developed while the interior regions are still catching up, you can thank history and economic makeovers. It's like Portugal went through different fashion trends, with the coastal areas being the runway models while the interior regions patiently waited for their turn in the spotlight. But why stop at topography? Portugal's climate adds another layer to this puzzle. The north needs jackets and umbrellas, while the south enjoys an endless summer vacation. In Portugal, it's not one-size-fits-all weather. The north, like Minho and Duros, gets more rain, 1,500 millimeters annually, compared to the sunny Algarve in the south, with just 500 millimeters. This climate dance impacts crops, especially in the south, where the sun and warmth make it a hot destination. The coasts draw people not just for beach parties, but also for the sunny allure they offer. And that's not all. Social factors also take center stage in unraveling the mystery of Portugal's emptiness. Picture Portugal as a diverse family with different flavors in each region, dialects, cuisines, customs, and traditions. So what's the deal with regional identity? Different parts of Portugal have their own special bonds, like having a favorite hometown dish you can't find anywhere else. Now, let's take a stroll to the quieter siblings, the interior regions. Historically less developed, they have a strong regional identity. Folks there may feel deeply attached to their home turf. Another character in this social tale is immigration. Portugal opens its doors, but guess where most decide to hang their hats? Yep, coastal regions. So while immigration brings diversity, it also adds to the hustle and bustle in already busy coastal areas. Social factors like regional pride and the immigrant shuffle contribute to the population jigsaw, with some areas having a stronger pull than others. Seeing the population imbalance, the government decided to roll up its sleeves and get to work. Why? To spread the love and opportunities to the less populated interior regions. So, imagine regional development agencies and investment funds as fairy godmothers sprinkling magic dust on the interior. Tax incentives are thrown into the mix too, 
financial treats to tempt businesses and individuals to set up shop in quieter corners. But every hero faces challenges. The interior regions might find it tough to attract new residents and businesses. Limited economic opportunities could be a hurdle. Yet, the government is determined. In this social and governmental dance, Portugal aims for a more balanced and harmonious future. And the fruits of the initiatives bore rich results. Portugal, with its warm embrace and scenic landscapes, has evolved into a global haven, beckoning people from diverse corners of the world. Approximately 184,000 Brazilians, 46,000 Britons, and a growing number of Ukrainians and EU nationals have chosen Portugal as their home, weaving vibrant threads into the country's cultural tapestry. In recent years, the influx of newcomers has surged, driven by the allure of a welcoming community and Portugal's renowned beauty. These fresh perspectives enrich the social fabric, creating a harmonious blend of cultures and experiences. Amidst this cultural tapestry, Portugal faces a significant demographic shift, marked by an aging population. The proportion of individuals aged 65 and older has risen to over 23%, reflecting global trends in increased life expectancy. While a testament to improved healthcare, this shift poses challenges to the workforce, healthcare systems, and social services. To navigate this demographic transition, Portugal is adapting policies to meet the evolving needs of its aging population. In response to more deaths than births, the country employs immigration as a strategic measure, contributing to stability amidst demographic changes. Innovative solutions are sought as birth rates, migration patterns, and societal behaviors shape the ever-evolving demographic landscape. Governments, including Portugal's, proactively address these challenges through initiatives ranging from promoting childbirth and family support programs to attracting skilled workers. But even after all these initiatives, why is the interior still facing a tough sell in attracting new residents? Picture convincing someone to trade the bustling city for a peaceful countryside retreat. It's not always an easy pitch. Despite the picturesque beauty of the interior, limited economic opportunities pose a hurdle. Businesses and individuals often look for places where they can thrive and grow, and the interior regions may need a bit of a makeover to become those sought-after hubs. The emigration of young people, coupled with declining birth rates, has led to a quiet exit. It's like the party is winding down and people are slowly trickling away. Understanding the global context, we see significant changes in population dynamics, driven by factors such as decline, migration trends, and global urbanization. Portugal in the heart of Europe faces these challenges, but governments, including Portugal's, are proactively putting in place measures to address them. The reasons behind why 70% of Portugal seems empty are like pieces of a complex puzzle fitting together. From historical decisions favoring the coast to the modern challenges of attracting residents to the interior, Portugal's tale is one of balance and evolution. Thanks for joining us on this adventure and we will see you in the next one.